instructions. On the screen, you will see 10 blue words. Each of these blue words has a corresponding red number to its left. That is the assigned number. Place that number in the box that is in front of the appropriate definition for that word. You will have approximately two minutes. The first word on our list is spelled P-I-Q-U-E. It's a strange spelling. You can see from that Q-U-E it's probably a French origin. The French did that to a lot of the words in English. It's pronounced peak as in peekaboo, I see you. But you hear it mispronounced quite a bit. I've mispronounced it myself quite a bit. It has several meanings. I think the meanings of peak is quite broad. It can mean a sharp irritation or resentment, especially when you wound somebody's pride. He was greatly piqued when they refused him the job. It can also mean just to excite out of interest or curiosity. The cat's curiosity was piqued by the mouse, and so the mouse killed the cat. And the third one, the next definition, you just sometimes when you arouse uh, the emotion or interest of others to, to provoke you into action to pique somebody's interest that's the way i would use it that third way but if you look at most dictionaries that's not the primary definition so you should keep all of those definitions in mind it comes from obviously the french word you can tell that with that que again and originally it just meant to pick at something or sting or irritate and you can see if you did that you might uh, arouse an emotion so that's how we get that if somebody sticks me with a pen or irritates me it's certainly going to pique my interest it should be paired up with the ninth one down to provoke or cause indignation the word peak is a fairly interesting word you see it a lot on tests don't know why, but I've seen it on the uh, SATs, the GREs, uh, quite a few standardized tests. The second word down is odious. Odious means highly uh, offensive, repugnant, disgusting, and uh, it comes directly from the uh, Latin odious, which meant hateful, from the, the Latin word odium which meant hatred. And of course, in case you're wondering, odium is still used in English as the word odium, means to hate. So if something is odious, it's very offensive, 
disgusting. If uh, you have odium, you have hatred, so that all matches up. It should, of course, be paired up with the seventh definition down on the list, meriting strong displeasure. Not a particularly common word, but it's such a strong word. Important to remember strong words, and odium does have strong feelings. I think the next word, fortified, is something that most students understand. However, please recognize that I review a lot of these that I think you know because they have good roots I want you to remember. Fortify means to protect or strengthen against attack. Of course, that's what a fort does. It also sometimes can mean to increase the effectiveness of something. For example, you hear certain foods are fortified with vitamin. In other words, the word fortified can be used emotionally or spiritually. For example, his words fortified my spirit, made my emotions stronger. And of course it comes from the Latin fortis, meaning strong. And you see this in a lot of words. Uh, you actually see it in the word forte. Sometimes somebody might ask you, what's your forte? And you might say, my forte, my strength is my personality or my willingness to work hard. I suppose that every individual has his or her own forte. That's your forte, your strength. It's spelled F-O-R-T-E. You see the word fort, though, in a lot of words. Comfort, fortress, fortitude, and so forth. It should be paired up with the eighth definition down the list as to strengthen. Our next word, our fourth word, is tantamount. A lot of people may have seen this, but they really don't know exactly what it means. It means as good of, it's an equivalent to. His statement was tantamount to a confession. That means didn't really make a confession, but it was as good as a confession. If I asked a defendant, Defendant, did you kill Johnny? The defendant might respond, I was responsible for his death. That's the same thing. It's tantamount. Of course, uh, it sounds French, and it is. Tant was a uh, old French word meant equal. And I don't know if you notice in the word tantamount, the last few letters spell out amount. So it means the same amount. Tant is the same as the equivalent amount. So that's how we get it, tantamount. It should be paired up with the fifth one down, equivalent in value or significance. In other words, tantamount is tantamount to equivalence in value or significance. Let's proceed to our next word. Our fifth word is pronounced portentous. Portentous is a type of prediction, but it's a very negative sort of prediction, an ominous sort of prediction. You might have portentions of defeat. You're thinking that you're going to get defeated in battle. It's a prediction, but it's used in a very fearful or negative way. It comes from the Latin portendere, which meant foretell. Matter of fact, if any of you are ever unfortunate to read in the original Latin, the Romans always were portending toward things. They were cutting up birds' guts and animal guts all the time to see what would happen in the future, and they were always having these forebodings. So please, I hope you avoid that. If you look at the word, it's divided in the uh, poor and the tin part. The tin part was the tendary part. The tendary part meant to stretch forward. And I want to focus on that tend. We still use that word tend in a lot of words. Extend, pretend, contend. And the tend always means something about the stretching forward. Extend is obviously to go out forward long ways, pretend to you know, stretch the truth, we also say that, contend and so forth. They all have to deal with that stretching forward. And portentous, it's a negative prediction. It should be paired up with the third definition down, a foreboding or foreshadowing of evil, something that's ominous. Our sixth word is tout. Tout means to describe or to advertise, usually in a boastful or exaggerated manner. It also can have a more general meaning of just merely 
soliciting for business, employment, or votes, but we generally use it in the boastful sense. It's not a real interesting word. It's from the old English Germanic roots to stick out or peep or peer. It's not a really interesting word, but you need to know tout. It should be paired up with the fourth definition down to describe or advertise boastfully. Our seventh word, L-I-T-H-E, is pronounced lived. It's not lith, it's lived. It means to be flexible or supple. You know, a rubber hose might be lithe, but you can use it in a emotional sense. You can have lived feelings, flexible feelings. Ah, you can use it in metaphorical senses. It's again, it's one of these uninteresting words in my opinion. It's from the old English Germanic root that's really not changed over several thousand years. Uh, lithe of course spelled it differently. It should be paired up with the first on the list which is graceful, flexible, or supple. Our eighth word, aggrandize, is much more interesting. It means to widen, to increase in size or intensity, enlarge, extend, all of those would work. Uh, secondary meaning might to make greater in power. You uh, aggrandize your wealth or your rank. It of course, it's a Latin word from the grandere to make great. We use it in words such as grandfather. Our grandfather was our great father. The father's father is great, I suppose. Sometimes you hear it in slang. They say, give me a grand. That's a large amount of money, a thousand dollars. But I think most of you know that. Just anytime you have something with grand in it, you know that it means something bigger. It should be paired with the second one down on the list to increase or make greater. Our ninth word is precarious. Precarious means to be dependent on circumstances, usually beyond your control. It also, in a more general sense, might just mean you're exposed to some sort of danger. It comes from the Latin precarious, which means that you are begging for somebody's help and and you know if you're in a precarious situation you too might want to beg uh, the priestess part of that the that you see at the beginning that's uh, the pre is not before it's usually when you see pre it means before in this case it comes from precus which meant to pray and it should be paired up with the last on the list, dangerously lacking in security or stability. So that's precarious. Our last word is demise. Demise in many cases just means the death or the end of life of a person. If you're deceased, you're demised. It doesn't necessarily have to deal with the death of a person. In a secondary sense, it can be a termination of existence of any operation, the demise of the Roman Empire. It comes from uh, Latin words, uh, de or dis, which meant away, uh, and materi, and of course, it was conjugated in many, many ways, but one way is with either mit or miss. And we still have that sense of mit or miss of sending or going away and many many words on here and you see in demise it sort, of, you sort of go away for good but the met or miss in the sense of sending away you get it with emit remit submit admit commit permit transmit omit intermittent mission missile there's a lot of words with mit or miss in it, and they all have something to do with sending away or going away so that's our last word of the list. Let's go on to the next list.